Hello, Nardag here. Today I'm playing something that's slightly different from my usual thing. And this is TIS 100. It's a it's a new game by Zaxsoft, the makers of uh, Space Cam, and possibly uh, slightly more popular uh, Infinity Factory. And they're all puzzle games that that really requires some thinking and complex uh, complex uh, combinations of, uh, of of basically elements you've learned before and you have to combine them in in, in creative new ways and TIS 100 is is possibly the most abstract of of the bunch and it's interesting so far. I started playing it yesterday evening, and so far I've completed uh, seven of the of the missions, and I'm still figuring out how to do the eighth one. But I'll figure it out at some point. <coughs> and I was looking at the different puzzles. Um, so first, uh, let just I'll show you the the first one, uh, the the first self-test diagnose, and it it looks like this. So basically what you're working with is some kind of supercomputer thing. And each of these uh, squares um, can basically be programmed with a very small program. So each of the, the lines in here you can add one instruction. Um, and these different processors or, or units or I'm not even sure what they're called. They, they connect. So this one has an input called in A. Um, this one out here is called out A and it has a nice arrow pointing outwards and the goal for this mission is to read a value from in A and then you write the value to out A so in here out there and the inputs in this game are all numbers and they're basically numbers between minus 999 all the way up to a plus 999 and any anything in between so you're just moving numbers around and doing interesting things with them and, and, and things get more complicated uh, as you go and you notice there's two nice in the middle that are red so this one has a, a communication failure and this one has a communication failure but it also has a debug button So if you click it then it will basically list some 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 text notes from the background of the story. So there, there's a bit of a story interwoven in between all the, the puzzles. So that's just like with Space Cam. There you had the actual machines focusing on doing their machiney things. Um, and in between them sometimes there was some, some, some story elements to just spice things up a little bit. But I'm not going to go into the story too far, um, because to me the puzzles are the interesting bit. So the way this works is you write simple programs, and each of the of the machines just runs them line by line. And I'll just press F1, and you get a an instruction set reference. And these are basically just simple assembly instructions that that really do really really simple things. So for example, there's an instruction called MOV, which stands for MOVE, and it moves the value from the source to the destination. Um, and then you got things like adding and, and subtracting, and you can negate something, so you can turn a negative into a positive number and a reverse. And there's a bunch of jump instructions that you can use, and you can leave labels, and there's something called a SAVE and a SWAP. If we continue, then you see that the machine has a couple of things on the side. The first one is, is the ACK, I think it stands for accumulator, which is basically the active value. And then you got a BUCK, which is like a backup value. And you can use SAF to copy the value from ACK to BUCK, and you can use SWAP to flip. So you can use that to basically use very short term memory and, and do things with that. But for now, the, just, just to show how this works. There's a list of numbers that go in, and there's an, expect an expectation of the numbers that will come out. Because after all, we're testing the machine. The, the, the internal logic we have to implement, but the input and outputs of the machine have been predefined. So, in this first one, I'll just uh, step through. 
and you'll see uh, all the instructions are all highlighted now and the inputs and outputs are highlighted so we're basically at instruction zero nothing has happened it's just been been ready so if we if I press F6 for the next one now you see 14 just went in which is the first one from the list and it will just stand there in the input until it's picked up by by the machine so in this case we have an instruction here that says move up so that's the input on the upside and we move it to the right so if you move another step forward that is exactly what happens the, the, the value that was up gets moved to the right and as far as I'm aware all instructions consume their input so the move it actually it takes it out and it puts it in here so you can't store things in the network so to say between you have to use the accumulator for that so if I advance the another step then we can look at this one it moves left to right so if we do that that's exactly what happens and here in parallel you see this machine another in input was ready and this one again is ready for the next instruction so if I advance it once more then the move action moved the number of 38 from in to out and in the meantime the other machines are also working in process so if I do that a couple times you see the numbers just jumping between nodes until they get here and then they get flushed out and then you see that we keep a nice log of the things that, that happen when outputting numbers so I can just do this by hand all day or I can just say run and it will just go at a, a faster pace and you see the numbers are slung through and then it will give you an overview of how well you did so in this case this is uh, like a, a, a scoreboard that compares your results with the results of other people and this is this is the very first uh, puzzle and there's only one solution uh, and now this way I made the choice to go via the right side but I could have easily just gone via the left side and the length of the chain would have been exactly the same length because you got your input that's number one two three four five six where it goes out but if I would have gone left it's one two three four five six I'm back where I started so this is the very first puzzle it just just it, it yeah it's a very simple example of how it's uh, done then the next one gets slightly more complicated and you see I got three slots up here for three different saves and uh, I'll uh, start with the first one this just was my, my original idea so the goal here is we still got one input and one output but the failure nodes have been been moved to different places so if you want to get something from here to there the fastest bit is to go down and here or to go to the side and down but either way use any of the four nodes out of these six and you have the most ideal uh, path there so the goal here is to read the value from in A so we drop a marble in here now we have to double the value and then we have to write double the value out so that that's basically what I'm doing here so let's uh, start by just stepping through so we get a number we move the up into into the ACK which is the storage then it's stored and then we use the add instruction and it basically add means whatever add whatever number is in whatever I'm pointing to so in this case it's ACK and store it into ACK so I'm basically adding ACK to itself which doubles the value I could also say okay add left to ACK or add up to ACK and it would combine two different numbers but in this case I want to add it to itself to double it so that's exactly what we do so we now run that instruction you see 11 becomes 22 which is double then next up we move ACK down so we basically flush it Boom. now 22 is out and then from here we have a move up to down so this one just pipes it through move up to right so we go to the right and we move left down so basically after this we just pipe it out there so all the magic happens here and after this is done 22 is still an arc it's out here so the move instruction from ACK doesn't destroy the value it keeps the value it copies the value 
which is an important uh, thing for later. Okay, so if we move on to the next instruction, we move up here into arc. Boom. So we overwrite the value of 22 that was there before with the new value, which is 12. We double it, we flush it out. And we just run it like that. And we just uh, speed it up a little bit. And then we say fast and just boom. Okay, so this solves it in uh, 160 cycles. So every instruction uh, that gets executed, they, they call a cycle. Um, you see there's there's slightly a slight spread in the results here. So there's a small bump, so there's a couple of people who took slightly more uh, instructions to do it than the 160 that I took for this solution. But there's also a way to do it faster, and I'll get to that next. Another one is the, the number of nodes people have used. So I used four. You see here there's an indicator for five, and there's uh, one in the middle between five and seven, so that's probably six. So people have used variations using multiple of the nodes. And the instruction count statistic is also... I'm, I'm using the, the lowest number of instruction counts, uh, also the lowest number of nodes, and there's some people who used slightly more instructions. So I optimized for two out of three different uh, statistics. And the reason I'm actually recording this now is that just prior to recording this, I I had a I had an idea, I had a dream, so to say, of how to improve this, and I'm going to show you that next. So that's we go to version two, in which I use five of the notes rather than four. So actually, just quickly go back here. So what happens here is the value comes in. And if you pay attention just to the top, to the top machine, all that happens is it cycles between three values and it flushes out a value. So it uh, moves the value in, it adds it, it copies it, and the next instruction we go up. So this is a cycle that's basically four long. So all the magic is here, and these are just dump pipes that do move the data through. So Given that we ended up with 160 cycles, I'm assuming that the list of numbers was 40 long. I haven't counted it, but that makes sense to go through. So, I, it doesn't really matter where in the chain we have these instructions. They can be at any spot. And it doesn't matter, because that's the critical section that gets repeated for every number. So, every number input, we need, to, uh, need four instructions to process it. And that's where I... Uh, I had an idea. These machines, they all work in parallel. That's the key here. They work in a parallel. So, instead of optimizing for the lowest number of nodes and do letting one node do all the work, and basically having the other four, no other three nodes be idle, I'm using a concurrency. So, in this case, we we. Start here. We treat the input as a dump pipe, so we get number 11, we move it down here. And then we say, okay, we move the, the one that's up, we move it down. So when the number 11 gets fed to this machine, which does basically the same three instructions to double the number as before. Okay, so you're still doing the same thing. Why is this better? You're using an extra node here. Isn't this a worse solution? You might be right, given that what I said before. In the previous solution, all the nodes that were not busy doubling the number were doing nothing. They were wasting basically their, their time idling. And in this case, it takes four cycles to crunch through the number, to move it from input to output. So what if we uh, split it, the work? What if we split the workload? So in this case, we take another number in, 12, and then you see here, rather than loop and always push the number down, we have a second instruction that's just waiting for a number to appear upstairs, and then rather than moving it down, we move it to the right. Because this one is still busy doubling the number. It has just added the 11, and this one is already ra waiting. So if... Uh, if this was just a simple pipe again, then 
the number 12 would be moved um, let's say if, if the, 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 the move up right was not here if it was just moving it down then the number 12 would be pushed to the down arrow uh, slot while this one was still crunching so the number would sit there for one or two cycles uh, two cycles I think before this one was ready for it but instead we push it to the right boom so now the 12 here is ready for processing this one has just finished doubling it so now this one is going to flush the 22 in here while this one is starting to double the number and the next number is already coming in so this one is done and then we see it just moves back up to wait for a new number and start doubling again well this one has just finished doubling it is now f uh, ready to flush the number if we look here this one has just flushed the number it received from here this instruction is grayed out because it's busy writing to the output which counts as an instruction while this one is now ready to push it down to the, to the pipe so if we do another one 24 gets moved to the output and this one is ready to receive it so this way the heavy lifting is done in parallel in two identical nodes while the input and output mechanisms just alternate between moving the data between one and the other node and if you see this works beautifully and because the critical path is shorter we do it in less cycles at the expense of using an extra node and using some extra instructions so this was my, my, my key insight uh, that I just got about how this works and I'm, I'm curious to see how this will apply to the different machines that I've already completed and you can see that, that for some of these I for example for this one all my three solutions have used six nodes which most people do but there's people who do, do it with less nodes so there's probably a solution out there with five so I would probably want to use one of them to see if I can get it in five nodes then if you look at the cycle count I'm actually in, in a this is a slightly less uh, popular solution so to say and if you look at the number of instructions I'm using 14 there's probably a way to do it with uh, 12 or 13 and these are just my, my most optimal solutions because for example the, the, the this is one that has 316 cycles that's the shortest but I also have them with longer instructions so let's just crack one of these open so what are we doing here we're reading values from in A and in B and we write in A minus in B so and we write that out to out to P so what we write right out here is this one minus that one and we write it there um, to the other one we write B minus A so there's a curious case here of mixing values because they basically have to, to cross combine between them and this, uh, the way I, I thought of that was to just treat one of the you know the top and bottom as just dumb nodes do the calculations in the middle and someone did it with five nodes so they probably managed to cut one of these out and do something crazy with just having uh, a creative combiner so this one maybe sends it there then we go down and then we split it again I don't know um, but that seems plausible doing it with less instructions or with less cycles probably refers to this loop being rather long so if we step through it so we take the numbers they appear both at the top we push them down and then they both store the value in the accumulator then on the left hand side we save it so we copy it to the back in parallel on the right hand side we copy it to the left because we need to subtract a minus b and push it downwards so that's what we do so 
number has been saved and it's been queued up. So the next thing we do is we sub the value from the right. So we have the stored value. We subtract the value the, the value on the right. So that goes boom. Then it becomes 16. And then we move the subtracted value and we move it down. So that, that finishes up the value for P. This one. But remember, N also wants a value. So we wrote it out. We're done with that. Then the next part. We swap the numbers. So we take the original input, 26, we swap it back into the accumulator, and then we move that value to the right. In the right hand uh, machine, you see it's waiting for a sub left value. And you see it's, it's slightly grayed out, and the input with question mark is highlighted in, in, in bright white because that's the active thing that the machine is doing because its mode is in reading. It's blocking while waiting for input from the left hand side. Because remember, this one still has the input value of 10 and it's waiting to subtract the input value from that side. So that's now ready. So we can move this into the output buffer. So this one ought to get happy and it subtracts it because it now has an input. And then what we do is we move the accumulated value down to flush it here. And then it, si it, it cycles back to the first instruction and basically takes another input while on the left hand side we are now already we, were already, we already moved the, the new input value in, duplicated it and we're waiting for a value to subtract. So if we run this it's, it's longer. You see it, it doesn't advance quite as fast as the previous machine because it basically it, it needs six different instructions which some of them which depend on, on network input and output so that that's the critical section that 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 takes a bit longer to uh, to process and there's 393 instructions so if we assume there's a list of about 40 items again it's just under 10 instructions per per item minus 7 so that's rather suboptimal um, if you look at it from a cycles point of view and I think this is one of my earlier versions so let's see if we take this one this one goes faster so now you see the top um, uh, ones are no longer dumb pipes they actually have some internal logic because remember, if one machine is doing 10 instructions as the, its critical section, then for each input, it's probably going to rotate through all 10 sections. But if you manage to spread those 10 instructions out into like 6 instructions here and 6 instructions in another node, chances are the critical section is only going to be 6 instructions long. So it's going to be faster even though you use more lines of code for that. And that's one of the, 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 the critical insights in, in this game that you have to parallelize and spread instructions out and it's if you're used to thinking of things in, in, in single uh, procedures that just happen one step after another after another and, and after another without accounting for thinking in parallel this is a very interesting way to just expand your your thinking uh, I mean I'm, I'm a professional uh, programmer and this is it, it, it for me it's a it's a nice way to just expand my my brain so to say to to think in parallel because that that's a really hard thing to do okay, but let's get back to the program so what we do here is we take the in input in, uh, value and rather than pushing it down we move it to the accumulator so we store it and we do it on both sides okay so why are we doing that because if you put something in the accumulator and you move the accumulator value somewhere else the accumulator value remains if you move something from an input it moves out and it disappears but if you store it then you can move it multiple times so in this case um, remember that in, in the left node before we used a uh, save swap function to put something in the accumulator copy it to the backup 
do our calculations, then restore the backup and push it to the other side. That's why it was six or so instructions long. Here we're taking a different approach. So first, I've got some nice comments in here. So the first one for the, the A minus B, which is the value for that has to go down here, we move it down. And the same one we do here. So boom. 26 minus 10, 16 is going to move out. So here, we take the up value, we put it in the accumulator. And in parallel, we take the up value and we move it to the left. So that's what happens. We've got 26 here, 10 there. So the logical thing to do is to subtract the right value from here. And that gets us the proper A minus B value in the accumulator, which we then move down. Boom. Okay, so next up we want to calculate this value. So here we take B minus A. So again we take the value and move it down. So we already flushed that. Uh, I think we already cycled through. So but this one it took the up value and it put it in the accumulator and now this one is waiting for the value from the left. So that's what's going to happen um, next cycle here. We move up up value and we move it to the right which it's waiting for. And we move it to the right well, we subbed it. Now we do that. And then we move the accumulator value and we move it down. And that's how we calculate that. And on this side, there's no resetting, there's no flipping. We're already done and we're waiting because we no longer have to manage the, the, the value in buck. That, that saves up at least a save and a, a swap call in here which massively speeds up the process. So if we start this machine, you see each of the little machines doing more work individually. But in total, the entire process goes faster. So this one moves through a, a bit faster. So if you accelerate this, you'll see we're at 316 instructions where before we had, I think it was 384. So that saves 68 instructions. If I do my mental maths correctly. But it's a heck of a lot faster and all I and I'm still using the six machines and I, I, I think I use one more extra instruction. And I think this is a earlier version. Because it's yeah the other one was 14, this one is 16 instructions. So here we make a trade-off between low cycle count, high instruction count. And here we make a, uh, uh, a trade-off for low instruction count, high cycle count. And of course there's one more optimization to make and that's for a low node count. Because people have done it with five nodes. And just seeing this graph and, and seeing that, that your arrow is not all the way on the left, on the most optimal of solutions, it, it, it's, it's inspiring because you know there's a better way to do it. So you start wrecking your brain to uh, see if you can do it in a better way. And so there's for each of the puzzles there's a way to do it. So let's see. This is another one. I started at 284 cycles, 25 instructions. And I managed to optimize it to get rid of three instructions here. And then I got rid of another two instructions and made it six cycles faster. And now I'm, I'm in the in the fastest range of uh, solutions with this one. Let's uh, see what this does. Read the value in from A in. Oh, this just in. There's no in A. And then write out to here to G if in is greater than zero. Write uh, one if it's uh, equal to zero and write a one here if it's low, less than zero. And if that's not true, then write out a zero instead. So basically we're just sorting numbers, so shifting through numbers to indicate what they are. And there's a, a nice list here that goes in. And then you have to output three values for every one input. Which is interesting. In this case I just treat the input as a dumb pipe, just move it in here. And then we have a section and we come to another feature which is labels and jumping. So this is an, um, an interesting one to, to, to show. So a label doesn't do anything. It's just a, a marker that the code can go to. 
um, with the jump instruction J JMP so this basically says okay so if you run this basically jump over there and execute the next instruction after that so it's a way to jump in between your code and do basically multiple things in a single machine based on something and that's where the the JGZ jump if greater than zero uh, instruction is for used or the JEZ jump if equal to zero and there's the JLZ which is jump if less than zero and the thing they're looking at is the value in ACK so if the value in ACK is greater than zero we jump to the label named true which I have declared here so that's basically true it moves the value of one down so you can actually set hard-coded values to be moved as well it just don't have to rely on input so if this is not true it automatically moves on to the next instruction which will move a zero down so that this is the how the machine here runs so we can just trace it it's minus two so if we think about it minus two is less than zero so the first one checks if it's greater so this should be a zero this one checks if it's equal that's also not good the last one that it's a negative number so this one needs to output one and if you look at the expected values zero zero one confirms that so we have our minus two this one is still eagerly waiting okay we have minus two in the arc let me do a check is the value greater than zero well it's not greater than zero so we won't execute the jump and we'll instead just move on to the next instruction which says okay we move zero to the output to down which writes it out and then next up we move the value and the accumulator and we move it to the right why do we do that because we have the input value and only this machine has checked it so far but the other machines should check it as well because for this input of minus two we need to output zero zero and one because the last node is the one that discovers that hey it's actually less than zero so it wants to output to one so after we're done processing it here we send the value along and then the next machine can check it and the next machine can check it and if you just, just take a uh, you know, squint a bit and just look at the, the structure of the code you see that the structure of the code is mostly the same between these the only difference here is this has a JGZ for greater than JEZ for equal than and this is a LZ for less than that's the, the, the main difference and there's a note here that says duplicate and that's because we move the value from ACK and we move it to the right and we do that here and this is the last machine and there's no more fourth machine to move it over to so we don't need to duplicate the number to the next machine so that's why it doesn't have that instruction so this one is now done processing it we send minus two onwards to the next and then we jump back to the check and then see boom it jumps here it's processing it wasn't uh, equal to zero either so it just fell through we flush the zero it's a zero now we copy it to the next value okay so here we move to uh, we have a less than zero check this is a negative number so it's less than zero so this is true so it jumps and then we move one down the output uh, which is what we expect so we set it out it gets flushed first line is happy so we pro correctly processed the first number and then we jump back to the check to start a new and wait for input or basically with this one waits until this one is done with processing so if you just just let that go uh, slowly go through this one is actively crunching a lot this sometimes blocks waiting for input and this also waits for input for that side so this is it's not the most ideal solution there's a faster way to do that then also small jump a small optimization that that saves a couple of instructions this is the exact same program as the first one but with, with a small addition okay I took the comment out but there's no jump to check in the end because 
once the program reaches the end it loops back and goes to the beginning so taking those three instructions out didn't change anything about how the program worked but it did save three instructions so it made it better so we went from 25 to 22 but cycles and nodes stayed exactly the same so a last one and this is only a minor minor improvement what I was doing before I was checking the number I put it in the arc then I was checking it sending out a 0 or a 1 to the output and then I copied the value along to the next one and the next one and the next one so this one didn't start with processing until this one was done processing the first number but here's the there uh, and the same happens here this one didn't start processing until this one was done processing the number so there was a bit of a boot up time because um, the numbers just needed to be pushed through first and once they, they were all just busy it took longer to process a single number than it uh, to push it through so once they got started they got started but there was a bit of a, a bit of a, a lag so to say in between the first one starting with the number and the last one starting with that number so what I did I moved some things around so the first one first thing we do let's uh, move the number through so we moved the left into the arc we saw we store it and then the first thing the very first thing we do is we move the stored value move it to the right so rather than first checking the value, emitting a value and pushing it out, we instantly send it to the right. So I think that saves about three instructions. And then this one can do its thing while this one checks. So this one can run in parallel and this one has the same setup as well. It first copies the value to the right before it actually does some processing. And again this saves a couple of cycles. So if we just, just advance this one and we go back to the list we see we go from 284 to 278 and I think this is the most optimal solution people have discovered so far because there's no one with there's, there's no graph on the left side so and with that I think I've been, been talking for long enough uh, so I, uh, I thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this this is something totally different most of the games I play tend to be more more visual simulations and this is more of a yeah it's somewhere in between a puzzle game and a programming game um, it reminds me slightly of, of Core Wars from, from back in the 2000s where you build battle bots that also basically consist, consisted of assembly instructions and yeah, I'm having a blast with this, so I'll probably put a couple more videos up, just, just, uh, after I've done and, uh, finished a machine, or a couple of machines, I'll just, just talk through them and, and, and talk about the, the variations I got and the different insights I got. Uh, I, I won't do a, a let's play of just me solving a certain problem for the very first time because then I could be recording for two hours uh, and it will just be a lot of head scratching and me sounding very confused uh, until suddenly it clicks and there's a light bulb that goes off and, and, and angels descend from the heaven and I, I, I finally get the answer uh, and that that might be amusing to watch if you could actually see all of the special effects but I'm just sitting here without special effects and it's rather boring so I'll uh, just probably do another recap once I manage to figure this one out and I take the, the next four it seems to be a decent length and there, there, there's 20 of the uh, 25 of the puzzles so that, that's gonna be uh, it's gonna be interesting so I uh, thank you for watching if you uh, enjoyed this please uh, like the video let me know that that you know that you care uh, and want to see more um, and with that I uh, hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.